from snail mail to flipped classroom. There is a long Swedish tradition of education and learning in settings outside the traditional teaching facilities of schools and universities. The text states you want to earn more, then you will have to show that you are worth more. Course letters from correspondence schools, like for example Hermots, was a solution for those who didn't have the possibility to take part of full-time studies because they had to support themselves by working at the same time as they studied. There was a growing need for education. For the same reason, the Swedish government at the end of the 20th century saw that it was important to offer education and further training in our knowledge-intense society. The net courses gave me a fantastic chance. Lena, 34 years old, working, a little daughter, lives in the rural area. The same message with other words in different times. At the end of the 20th century to 2006, there were a number of supporting public agencies. It started with DISTEM, the Agency for Distance Education, that was replaced by the Agency for the Swedish Net University. In 2006, NSHU, the Agency for Networking and Cooperation in Swedish Higher Education, took the supporting role. In 2008, NSHU was replaced by a web-based service facility, distansutbildningar.se, distanceeducation.se, that was sup supplemented by studera.nu, study.nu. The idea was that prospective students would be able to find all courses and programs in Swedish higher education on a single web page. The development and changes between agencies and supporting facilities reflects how the idea of how to run university courses changed. Initially, there was a strict division between campus and distance courses. Campus courses were courses where the education took place in lecture halls, classrooms, etc. at an institution for higher education in a way that in modern language is called face-to-face -face, or IRL in real life. The teachers and the students were at the same place at the same time. Distance courses were courses where you didn't have to travel to study. Still, most distance courses had meetings in real life. There was discussion in University of Sweden about how many meetings a course could have and still be called a distance course. This was extra interesting when the new NET University at the point gave extra resources to all courses that were classified as distance courses. The overarching concepts were flexible learning and lifelong learning. The flexibility was visible in when, where and how you could study and when you could apply for a course. The most flexible kind was free speed, free start, which for example could be found at Högskolan Dalarna. There you could start when you wanted and go on as long as you wanted. Lifelong learning, meaning that you have a need to learn more all your life, is so self-evident today that we almost have forgotten it. Another central concept is blended learning where you combine technique and methods for distance and campus education. Today the use of digital material and web-based tools is a part of everyday life. It is difficult to imagine a learning environment without networks, internet, smartphones, pads and computers, or at least it should be. You can still talk about campus and distance education, but it is possibly most useful as a help for future students with different practical possibilities to educate themselves at different times in life. I think, when planning a course, it is mainly a question of where the material, classroom, communication, students and teachers are situated. They do not need to be in the same building. The number of possible combinations of buildings and rooms, technical solutions, digital material and the net are countless. An alternative to higher education today is to join a MOOC, Massive Open Online Course, that you can find freely available on the net. This is where the students really have to take responsibility. You learn what you learn and then you know it. 
you cannot even be sure that you will get a certificate that anybody will trust. A method called flipped classroom have been much discussed and used lately. With flexibility, ICT, information communication technology, and student activating learning as a theoretical foundation, the use of recorded presentations much shorter than face-to-face -face lectures with questions, quizzes and tasks embedded have grown in popularity. To make it simple, the teacher moves from lecturing to the students, expecting them to start individually at home, to dividing your lecture into smaller parts, record it and add tasks. The student will watch the recording and will be better prepared to discuss the topic when you meet face to face. The idea is that one-way communication will decrease and interaction and understanding will increase. So what are the advantages and disadvantages concerning flipped classroom? Well, the pros I can see are, for example, it would be possible to repeat. The student can watch the presentation many times and concentrate on the tricky parts. It prepares for deeper work in the classroom. The students will have time to think and ask questions. The teacher's time with the students is used more efficiently. Students can take responsibility for their own learning, like always, but possibly more motivating. A better combination of lecture, question and feedback. Also for students that is less active in a face-to-face -face situation. So, what problems can there be? First of all, you are depending on technology, both producing and using the material. Not all teachers are used to using technology and you also need a very strong IT infrastructure at your university. The teachers and students are not used to this, they are unfamiliar with both the method and the technique. Bad lectures if they are not adapted for the media. It can also get really monotonous if all courses are like this. The students won't take responsibility for their own learning and copyright issues and uh, issues about updates. The question is who owns the material and then who decides when it will be updated, changed or removed. If you succeed or not with your course depends on a set of conditions. You, the teacher, must have the knowledge needed. You must communicate with the students. You have, must have the skill to plan a course and support discussions and you also need to create a learning friendly climate and be able to navigate and change the course as it is going on. As a possible extra material I offer you the community inquiry easily searchable on the web. Here you can find a well-built and cleverly presented model on how to create a learning experience. <laughs>